All right. What's up, Paul? How you doing? Doing really good. Uh, how was your Father's Day? It was good. Just chilled with the family and just, uh, you know, enjoyed it, man. Enjoyed it, man. Just uh, blessed to be a dad. You Amen, know? right? Cool. I, I spent time at, well, obviously at church, Sunday service. Um, all my kids showed up except one. He said he was working. Uh, but man, it's always a blessing. My granddaughters were there too. And uh, I was so exhausted after service. My wife and I came because we we're going to have some for my dad later on early evening. We're like, oh, we're going to watch some TV, some Netflix or something. Man, within five minutes, we're knocked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, brother. Like I said, beautiful. Those, those old man naps are beautiful, bro. <laughs> is that is that what we're labeled as now? Yeah, brother. I want to get one of those shirts, old guys rule. You know? <laughs> <laughs> go into the go into the next years in force, brother. Yeah, yeah. So, man, you know, you're the second person I've done an interview with. The first one was Flacco. I think people liked it, and it's very insightful. And um, I try to come from a Christian point of view because this is a, a Christian channel, you know. And I understand that. I get it. Sometimes we have channels that are not really everything is Christ based, but you know what I mean? The, the content. So you got to balance it. But here on this channel, this is full blown Jesus. Right. You know? and, and I love the fact that that um, that we could just be open and and not worry about turning some viewers off, because I mean, pretty much whoever watches this channel is a believer or they're about to be. That's why they're watching. Right. right. You know, so. Um, you interviewed me. What when was that? About a year ago? Yeah, maybe even more than a year ago. Yeah, it, it's been a while, and I don't even remember how. How did we meet up? I don't even remember, bro. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> she another old man thing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but but for those that don't know, uh, Paul is actually. Could I say who? I don't know who's the brains behind this fight. Uh, I'll probably be the organizer. Yeah, you're the organizer, the organizer of the, the Cholo Trucker and the Gunner fight. Also, the producer of Kilroy. Yeah, the executive producer, the owner. Yeah, the owner and, and executive producer of Kilroy, which is on a lot of movies. I, I watched it on Amazon Prime, actually, but I know you're, you're on a few platforms of that movie, yeah. right? Yeah, and Kilroy was... Um, uh, an amazing testimony. I got to, did you, I don't know if I told you, I got to do an event with him a few years ago. Um, it was me, MC Boulevard and Kilroy. Kilroy shared his story. I shared my story and MC Boulevard just tore it up. You know, yeah. and everywhere MC Boulevard goes, he brings a house down, you know? And um, that was, I think in Lincoln, California, which is a little further North from Sacramento. And, and I got to meet Kilroy. Didn't know much about him until after the fact. And I'm like, oh man, this guy was in deep, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I find it interesting that, you know, later on meeting you and you did his, his story, you know what I mean? And, and then now this fighting thing and uh, you got a great uh, YouTube channel. Uh, it's LA Times with a Z, right? With a Z, LA Times with a Z. Yeah. When you punch it in, you got to look under where it says Los Angeles Times, look under and it says, or did you mean... LA Times with the Z. What 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 gave you that idea to start that channel? You know what? For years, I would go around and say, you know, I understood media early on. Like I understood before this whole YouTube got started that you know I could go minister to one person and it's great. But through media, I could minister to thousands. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could throw out the net and to a lot of fish you oh, know yeah. i understood that and i understood that and, and i would go you know talk to people during my years and you know, talking years back even going to usc and talking to people you know other christians and i would say hey i want to record your testimony because i want to put it on youtube and they just wouldn't get it yeah they wouldn't get they wouldn't get the vision they would be like oh you know they didn't get it because sometimes when you have a call from god to do something not everybody's going to get your call. Not everybody's going to understand your mission or your vision, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I mean, you know that very well. So it was just one of those things. Eventually, I just had to start it up. I just started up and and I put up a video of a, of a friend who passed away who was a mobster. And um, I, I got to do, I did the video for his funeral and a very famous mobster in Orange County. I did the, the 
you know, the funeral, the little video they show, I did it for him. Yeah. I threw it up and forgot about YouTube. I come back later and it has like 60, 70,000 views, you know? Wow. And then so I knew, so then I came back and I go, you know, I better get on this. And apparently I'm going to go solo because to me, it is a calling because you sure don't do it for the money. You know, it is a calling that you know that you're going out there, that you're ministering, that thousands of people are going to watch it. So yeah. it's definitely that. So, you know, you know what's weird, Paul, is that I think me, you and I were bound to meet up. The reason I say is there's so many, you know, have you ever heard of um, the term six, three, six degrees of separation? No, I haven't. Yeah, that, that term means that, I don't know, I've never fully tested it, but they say that everyone in the world is six people apart. For instance, um, I know you. Who's somebody famous that you know? Name one person. In our world, MC Boulevard. Okay. Well, no. Well, I know him too. Somebody I don't know. Somebody I... Um... You've met them or talked to them or Sharon Stone. Who? Sharon Stone. Sharon Stone? Okay, perfect example. So now there's only two people, there's only one person between me and Sharon Stone. Who does Sharon Stone know? Exactly. She knows Michael Douglas, obviously. She played in a movie with him. Michael Douglas, see what I mean? Everybody and somewhere along the line, they probably met a president. They probably met somebody. So there's six degrees of separation. So what I'm the reason I'm saying is there's so many people that you and I know collectively that not even knowing that has that that we are mutual friends with that it was bound to happen that you and I were going to be friends. For you sure. know, perfect example, even John Silva, the correctional officer at DVI, um, the cast from Duke of Earl, um, even Flacco. Flacco reached out to me months ago on Facebook, and I didn't know who it was until later that I put two and two together, him from a convict's perspective. So there are so many different ways we would have eventually met up. Yeah, that's true. And, and I think that's a God thing, yeah. you know, and, and uh, those are things that I listen to and I take heed to because I'm like, okay, Lord, you're putting this person in my life. And I see all the different ways you would have connected it. So obviously, um, there's a there's destiny there. You know, and that's 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 why I, I embraced you, brother, because of that, because I, I listen to what God is telling me. Yeah. You know, um, but before all that, who is Paul, man? What did, where did you come from? What what brought you to where you're at now? And, and what was your life like before Christ? Well, growing up, I grew up in a house. No cussing, no beer. Right. No cussing, mm -hmm. no beer. Not because they're religious. It's just like they're just a family home. You know, what area? Uh, in uh, Orange County, okay. Orange County, over by near Disneyland, mm -hmm. and then um, so in that, but uh, I'll just say that my father used to be a little heavy-handed. You know what I mean, with uh, discipline. Yeah, and uh, so I grew up despising him, grew up hating him, um, wanted to kill him even as a young. I I didn't like the guy, and uh, so it came to the point boiling up about 14, 15 years old, probably fourteen. I uh, tried to kill him with, uh, you ever see, uh, what's that guy's name? Oh my God, that's a knife. That's not a knife. That's oh, a knife. Uh, Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. <laughs> with one of, you know, I tried to kill him. He was just beating on me. So I, I just said, that's it. You know, I'm getting bigger. And so we were fighting and I kind of like got the better. And I pulled out a knife from the knife thing and chased him. And wow. he lifted the, like one of those square fans that was on the floor. He lifted it up and blocked it and ran outside, called the cops. So, you know, I ended up going to uh, juvenile camp, wow. uh, juvenile camp, which uh, in Orange County, there's, there, there, there's a lot of them, but the highest one before you get to YA was called Los Pinos. Yeah. So I was sent there and I had to do so much time there. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a trip. It was a trip. And, uh, you know, from there, I was never off probation because once probation got you at that time, man, they violate you for anything. And I was a little knucklehead gangster, you know, I helped start my gang. I mean, my gang's been around since 40s, 50s, but our particular gang within that, I helped start it. And we had older homeboys we looked up to. We started our gang and uh, we were very violent. Um, you know, we we're very violent. It starts off innocent. 
doing little things like trying to derail the railroad trains and <laughs> stuff like that. You know, we'd put baskets and boulders and just, boo, you know, just dumb stuff. Yeah. But then this gets into more jumping people, beating people and shooting. And next yeah. thing you know, I'm, I'm going to jail, juvenile halls for sh shootings and uh, a lot of shootings. I beat a lot of shootings, had good attorneys, um, attempted murders, um, man, just you name it. It's just, uh, you know, we had the FBI looking at us, you know, back then for particular shootings. And uh, it was just a trip, man. It was a trip, you know. Yeah. Those are the, the county jail days. Those are before prison and, uh, you know, and going into county jail, I always respected my elders in a sense. I knew that the older homeboys, you got to give them respect. So people liked me when the county jail. Yeah. So when I was in there, I realized that uh, I was just a knucklehead, just doing, 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 just causing havoc. But I had a lot of love because I had a lot of homeboys in there in high power. So I was pretty much causing a ruckus. And uh, and I think I, the, the, the reason I gained a lot of respect early on, right in my teens, is the guy running the whole place and would help some of the big guys run the county was in my tank. So what happened is I'm barely kind of learning what all this is, you know? Yeah. All I known was this guy was the shot caller a couple of cells down. So now we get a wire to take this guy out. And, uh, you know, so, you know, he's from Santana, from Santa Ana. And so we get a wire, my Sally does actually, we get a wire from the, uh, from a guy from La Habra to take this guy down. And he's the shot caller, you know? Oh. So I'm all, I can't be him because he's running the place. He runs the county. And it ends up, it is him. We're going to chow and the, see the guys from High Power. They're like, what's going on? So... We ended up getting this guy and we didn't kill him, you know, we didn't kill him, but we beat the heck out of him. How old were you? Uh, probably 18. Oh, you're just barely. Yeah. yeah. But see, like I said, I, I, I respected my older homies. I respected all the older homies and especially even those guys. Yeah. And, uh, so I got a, by doing that thing, you know, it was a lot of favor early on. Yeah. I mean, if I, if I said the name who this guy was, I've never said it out loud. I won't, but a lot of people would be mad at me because uh, they would feel it was an undue hit. You know, it was a very famous hit, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that guy, he didn't die. He didn't die. And uh, so, yeah. And so, that, so through that, I gained a lot of favor. Yeah. You know I mean, a lot of people like me, a lot of favor, but it's, let me tell you something. That favor is fake though, bro. Yeah. That favor is fake because that's not the kind of uh, all that friendship, all that favor in that world. It's not real. It's built on a on a false foundation. Yeah, you know? built well, on the, a false foundation. Yeah, the thing is that that kind of favor is that if you make the wrong decision, wrong move, or if even if it's portrayed as a wrong move, boom, like that, the wheels turn, yeah. and uh, now everybody hates you. You know, yeah. All and, it took is for one other guy to come in and take over after who didn't like the move that i did yeah and, and, I, and i would have been but thank thank god man i was able to move on and you know i know i know we don't want to get too deep in everything but ended yeah. up in prison ended up in tracy with john silva ended up in chino ended up in corcoran you know all that so just yeah. to, just I, and, and and i never considered myself a cholo yeah i considered myself a gangster what's the difference you know? You know what? A cholo is more into the, you know, the dress, the Boyle Heights, the East LA Stilo, the brims, this and that. I never considered myself that. To me, myself, within my heart, like, I truly went 100% from my hood. Yeah. I considered myself a gangster. More along the lines of the Italian gangster. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, you mess with me, I'm not going to tell nobody, but I'm going to handle it. Yeah. You're not going to like when I knock on your door. Yeah, I never, I never heard the separation from a cholo yeah. monster. That's in, uh, in my mind, though. I'm not yeah. saying like anybody else. That was my thing. Yeah, no, I hear you. You know, it's funny. It's funny because growing up, you know, I, I dressed like a cholo, considered myself a gangster, considered myself I was a dope dealer. Yeah. Um, but it, it's not until now I realized that it was nothing compared to some of the stories of the men that I speak to. I'm like. 
this is crazy. You guys go deep, deep in that. And I thought I was deep. You know, so it's it's when you in perspective now, you know, you're so full of pride back then. You think you're the hardest one. You think this and that, you know, but I realized that um, the stuff that I was doing was nothing considered to some of the things that I've talked to some of the men, you know, that. Uh, but, yeah, I, I've never heard that separation, you know. Uh, yeah, and, and you're right, man. Everything even. Yeah, you said like when I would hear um, Kilroy tell his stories, you know, it's just like, dude, I was nothing. You yeah. know what I mean? I thought I was something. I was nothing. Yeah, well, I even was something in that world. Yeah, it's it's funny because even hearing uh, Pastor Al, who who's uh, my assistant pastor at the church, hearing his testimony, he he spoke about stuff on convict's perspective that I didn't even know about my own assistant pastor. Yeah, and uh, and hearing his story, and, and I'm just like, man, I thought I was hard. <laughs> yeah, I know you could tell he was holding back too much respect. Oh yeah. Al. You guys got to watch that interview if you haven't, man. It's, mm. it's fire, man. Yeah. Fire. I think it's one of the best ones Convict's Perspectives ever did. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was good. You know, it was really good. I noticed you froze up a little bit. Hopefully it'll come back. Can you still hear me? I can hear you, but I don't know why it's, it's frozen. Okay. I'm sure it'll, it'll jump back in, you think? I don't know. It's not. Yeah. Well, let's keep talking and hopefully it jumps back in. Unless you want to um, mute and unmute your camera, maybe that'll work. I'm not sure. Sure. You try that and see what happens. Things like this happen, guys. It's just uh, the world of the internet. And hopefully that, that helps. Unless you... It's done this before, bro. I think maybe you want to um, pause it, pause your recording. Okay. Let's see. I'll be right back, guys. Well, it'll probably, well, you can't tell. Hold on. All right. Now we're back. Had a little bit of technical difficulties there. Um, so where were we, man? What were we talking about? We're just talking about how, like, a lot of the foundations that we build yeah. in that prime world are fake they're not built on the rock yeah. so they're you know even peace treaties and all this stuff you know it's yeah. just not built on the firm foundation which is christ and that's not real it's a fake brotherhood you know well yeah and that's why i think that even jesus says that um that he gives us peace not the peace of this world yeah but the peace is beyond understanding because the peace of this world is limited there's a cap to the peace here and, and that's why Christ comes, because he gives us real peace, because he's the prince of peace, you know, and wherever Christ is, um, peace is going to dwell there, you know, and that's why that's really key and really important that, that we push Jesus, because that's the only true, that's the only true uh, freedom that we could ever have, you know, so, so you're in DVI, um, it's funny that, that you, you interviewed actually, um, John Silva, who was a correctional officer, uh, in DVI, what was DVI like? What's the one, if I said, what's the one memory that you carry about DVI, in, which is the Tracy prison, what would you say? Man, people ain't gonna like this. And it's not gonna make sense to a lot of you. Um, one thing I would say, yeah, it was like doing time at a park. It was like doing time at a park. Now, I know it's gladiator school. I know people get yeah. stabbed. And, and, yeah. see, and the reason I say that, see, one of my one of my homeboys was the one running the prison for the South Side anyway. Yeah. And uh, so we had a lot of juice. And I, I walked right into that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Walked right into that. So it was like doing time at a park <laughs> with violence. Wow. With violence. So you know what I mean? But uh, so it, don't get me wrong. You're away from your family. Yeah. That's horrible. You know, you go through times of, you know, missing your family. But, you know, at that time, you know, you have your TV in your cell. You know, the guards gave us a lot of leeway, you know, um, because of, yeah. you know, who, 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 who my homeboy was. And, uh, yeah, so, so, but don't get me wrong. I remember having dreams, David. Yeah. So I say all that in my thinking, in my criminal thinking, it was fun. Yeah. But, you know, you put on that hard thing, but the PTSD and maybe inside, I would have this dream all the time, bro. 
know, maybe this is what my soul was saying. I wasn't saved. I would have this dream at night so many times where I'd be like flying and I'd be flying from NorCal all the way to SoCal, like trying to make it to my house. And you couldn't Almost get there? knowing it was a dream. But right before yeah. I would get to my house every time, I'd wake up and I'm, oh, wake up and I'm back in the cell. So even though I put on that hard exterior, yeah, I think that was the truth inwardly. You have to like, you know how it is, David, you have to be strong. You know, you have to, you can't show any weakness yeah. with the program. And yeah. I was very good at that. Once I was arrested, as soon as I was in the local city jail arrested, my mind, it was weird. I don't know how this worked now with everybody. I wouldn't cry. I would just like turn it on a switch. This is my life now. Yeah. I was very good at that in my mind. This is my life now. I'm going to be in here for a few years or 10 years or whatever. Mm-hmm. And and I don't know how I did that, but it's a survival tactic. Yeah, it's a survival tactic. That's why for me, um, I was it was already my third felony when my gave, I gave my life to the Lord. It was my first long term sentence, and um, it was. It's funny you're bringing that up because it was really hard to balance being a true believer. Because there's a lot of people that grab the Bible, incarcerated, and they're just they're just playing games, or they're maybe they're lying to themselves. I, I don't know. But to be a true believer in Christ, yet at the same time, you know that you're you're with men that will see your meekness as a weakness, you know, and that was that was a balance that I had to carry for those six years, you know, so it's interesting you bring that up. Yeah. Um, so it's almost like you, I was preaching in the yard, but it's, it's just different, you know, it's different. People that have never been incarcerated, maybe they won't understand, you know, who, the closest people that I can talk to that will understand are people that have been in military service. You know, they, they find a lot of the same, the, the camaraderie, um, the having, um, just being away from home, living out of a locker. I have found that, um, like, uh, similarities, you know, I don't know if you've ever found that talking to somebody that served time in the military. Yeah. Or even, I, even similarities with some of the law enforcement and some, yeah. of the, some of the trauma that they go through, you're like, we've been through because what yeah. we've seen in the joint and the jails. Yeah. yeah. So, so when did you come to, to Christ? how that happen? Was it inside or outside? It was inside. It was inside. Um, so what happened is uh, I have this tattoo on my shoulder that um, CDCR considers a very affiliated um, tattoo with the guys from down south. Yeah. And so when I went to Corcoran, it was my first time to Corcoran. This is old Corcoran. This is not. I think there's new Corcorans and everything now. What had happened is, uh, you know, they, they strip you down. And when they look at your tattoos, they take pictures of yeah. you guys coming. Yeah. And uh, they saw my tattoo on my shoulder. And to me, it wasn't really an affiliated thing, you know, because I paroled from Tracy Mainline. You know, I, I was involved in riots and stuff over there, but I got to Corcoran. They slammed me down to level four. So I was in level four for a while, but I had level three points. So I was fighting it. Yeah. Because you know? level four, man, it was basically shower, back to the shower every few days, come back to your cell, lock down, lock mm-hmm. down. So yeah. I was fighting it, appealing it, you know, all this stuff because I had the points. And I didn't parole to be to be in that situation, to be in a level four, just my tattoo. Yeah. So usually it takes like three different things to validate someone. At least back then, they just slammed me down and they're like, you're going to do your time here. And I was like, oh, man, I'm going to fight it. So eventually I ended up winning my appeal, you know, winning my appeal. I had a homeboy in there too. Winning my appeal, they shot me down to the level three yard. And it happened that the shot caller was leaving. The shot caller from my area was leaving, who was a friend of mine from the yeah. past from Anaheim. He was leaving. And so he said, Paul, I'm going to leave you in charge. You know, I'm going to leave you in charge of my car, you know, yeah. my car, my particular car. So I took over the car. And to me, in my mind, it was temporary. I don't yeah. want that because that's too much drama. So anyways, um, we did that. I took over the car. My, my first thing was my order to everybody was everybody get a knife. That was my order. Everybody in my car had to come up with a knife. We we're going to be ready for war if something kicks off. Yeah. And it wasn't with the Nortenos. There was hardly any Nortenos in that yard. It really? was, you know, with the blacks at that time. Oh. It was with the blacks and tension and whatever. So I go through that. And again, it was my, in my mind, it was a, it was a temporary thing being in that position. 
So what happens, if you remember the starting of my story when I went to the county jail mm -hmm. and we took out that shot caller, you know, didn't die. I'm going to say didn't die. So, uh, you know, so the guy that helped me do that ends up driving up to the yard. Okay. Just driving to the yard. And it was cool because I told him, hey, brother, do you want to take the keys? And he didn't want to take the keys. So basically, you know, it was kind of like, let's just leave it. Let's do like a group kind of running things Yeah. And over time. And, and I'm glad that you, you talked about earlier because we talked about the peace of God. And I think yeah. I mentioned this, that the one thing, and this is like, now we're talking like a year later. Yeah. Okay. Since I kind of like let go of the keys, let go of the keys. There's peace on the yard, but there was this one, I used to have the best job to me in the prison, bro. I didn't have to do nothing and I would get paid. Right. I would, I would just go to the kitchen and my job was just everybody picks up cups. Yeah. Goes against their food. I was the cup guy. I was the <laughs> cup guy. And all I had to do when they ran out of cups, just put up another tray of cups and they would just go by and grab it. That yeah. was my job. And that was nothing. So everybody wanted that job, bro. So <laughs> there was a guy I worked with in the kitchen. He was a Christian. He was a pastor on the streets from a, from a, from a, a church called House of Stephanus in Montebello. And uh, and he was doing happened? time, huh? He was, he was doing time. He backslid. Doing time? He backslid, but he came back to he came back to the Lord in there. It humbled him. Here huh? I am. Yeah, here I am. A lot of people were like didn't want to be around me because I was a very mean person. Yeah, you know, and I was just they, a lot of people knew the position I had had. So they would just stay away. But you know, if you're a South Sider, the people would come up and talk to you. But this guy, yeah. I would I was sitting alone one day, and he just came up to me and he just said hi. I'm Mike. And he just shook my hand and oh, okay, whatever. But yeah. he took the opportunity to talk to me. And he was already like back right with the Lord. He would know he would pastor on the streets. But he had what I, he started talking to me and he took he had the peace of God. I wasn't desiring God, but he had the peace of God, man. And, and I can't explain if you ever see someone that has the peace of God. Yeah, so, man, they could walk through anything and, and the fire won't touch them, you know, almost, yeah. you know, so, so he had that peace of God. So I came up and said, hi, and he would just, he wouldn't preach to me. He did not preach to me. He would just come and I, I would watch his life from afar. I said, this guy's always smiling, happy. He and, led by example. Yeah. Yeah. And he would just saying hi, hi, hi. But I watched his life. Amen. And I guess all the times that people had preached to me, yeah, are coming back to me in my mind. And you know, even my aunt's giving me so I had my an aunt sending me chick tracks. Yeah, you know, I remember even those. That, even that, you know. And then um there was books. Um, I forgot Bill Glass Ministry used to come around and leave books. So I was a reader, so I'd read everything. Just, ooh. Little did I know that all the little things that we're doing, and for you out there, if you're passing out tracks or ministering or or whatever you're doing, evangelism, it's 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 one day it's gonna those seeds are gonna plant. Amen. Those seeds were planting in my mind. Yes, sir. So eventually I started wanting to hang around this guy more in the yard. And I think the other South Sider seen it. And uh, so one day, me and my homeboy, we, we used to go to church to look at the girls. You know, yeah. We used to have girls that come in. So we went to the church and the girls didn't come. We're like, oh, man, you know, they're cool. They weren't nothing big. But to us, they were like, oh, wow, women. We don't see women, right? So we went for that reason. And then plus to talk to the other homies in case the other yard comes. Yeah. We're back. They did an altar call. We went back to the cell. And I go, man, I felt like going up. I told my homeboy. Uh, he was a homeboy from the neighborhood. He goes, so did I. And I go, man, let's go up next time. He goes, okay. But the next morning, I couldn't resist the call of God. My cell, yeah. which is a homie, got up, went to work. And then um, I basically got on my knees. And, and, and I couldn't resist God. I couldn't wait till next week. Yeah. God was like calling me then. So what I did is I got on my knees and I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing, but I give my life to you and whatever. Right. I was, that, that was basically my prayer. I'm going to follow you now. Yeah. And what happened is I was disappointed. I thought God rejected me wow. because all I watched on TV was all this people falling everywhere and yeah. I didn't know what was going on. So I thought that you had to have this big old emotional thing, you know, with God that has to be a certain way. And, 
you know, I got to start, you know, doing all this stuff, mm -hmm. you know, rolling around the floor, David, you know? Yeah. So, but it didn't happen. So I thought God rejected me. So I thought God really thought God rejected me. So uh, I told God, and this is my thinking, how, how, how dumb it is now, but I was not knowing. I told God, okay, you rejected me. I get it. I've done too much dirt. You know, I've heard a lot of people. I go, I'm going to, I'm still going to follow you. Because, you know, you rejected me. I didn't reject you. This is my thinking, how dumb it is. You rejected me. I'm going to go follow you on that yard. And you know what? You're, you go, when I, when I stand before you and you send me to hell, you know that you rejected me. It wasn't me. <laughs> you know, you're going to throw me in. And I thought I was the only one. Because, yeah. you know what, guys, when you give your life to the Lord, it's not always going to be a big old emotional thing. It's not all like that, but I was looking for that because that's all I knew. Well, I'm, I'm, anyway, glad, I, I'm really glad you're saying this because I think there's some people that are watching that feel this way. Yeah, yeah. And so, so what happens later on, my, my Sally comes home from, from work and I go, I gave myself to God. And I didn't tell him that God rejected me or something. Yeah. I didn't reject me, but in my thinking, he goes, I knew you were going to do that. Here. And, you know, he's still a gangster. Yeah. So he's like, whatever, but he would read his Bible every night. So I was like, man, you're going to still give your life to the Lord? Like, yeah. So anyways, that night I got down on my knees to pray. My Sally's asleep as far as I knew. Yeah. And I got down on my knees to pray. And I prayed to the Lord. I go, you know, Lord, I love you. I don't know what I'm doing. You rejected me, this and that. Now, okay. So I can't explain this, but a big old warmth came over me. Boom, boom, boom. And to the bottom of my feet top of my head and it was just awesome and i was crying before the lord yeah. okay and god gave me that touch he needed to like to let me know son yeah you i you're mine you're mine yeah. you know now let me say this from then on i would i started chasing after that feeling again chasing that emotion yeah god will show you no you got to walk by faith that's you're right not walking after that emotion you walk by faith you know, not by sight. Mm -hmm. So I just say that, you know, don't always chase that emotion because emotion is emotional. You That's know, good. sometimes you're not gonna, you're not gonna feel it, but God's with you. You know, yeah. you're gonna be in the fire. You think you're alone, but God's with you. Yeah, and I, I like that. Really huh? So what, how long have you been saved now? Um, About 20, 25 years. Wow. Do you remember what, what year that was? Yeah, it was in 94, I believe. Okay. 94. Because I even remember hearing your songs later on, and I was a Christian, you know? <laughs> there was a couple of particular songs. I was like, man, look at that Vato wave near me. I'll take him out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but later on, you know, when you're a young yeah. Christian. Well, you know? it's, it, it's funny how God has a sense of humor, right? Because we're sitting here, we're not only friends, but we're brothers in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, you being from L.A. or that area, not L.A., but Southern California area, me being from up north and what yeah. I used to represent. And we talk all the time, man. I mean, you're my brother, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's funny. One thing for those out there, David, really quick. Yeah. It's one thing. I know I know we got to move on, but just let me say one thing. For, this is, hopefully, you guys, this will help you. Because um, remember, I was, a, I, was, I was one of the guys running things. I went out to the yard, and I had to tell everybody in my car who was under me at the time, you know, earlier. And yeah. then the other shot callers from the yard that I'm a Christian now. And I knew my life could be in danger because this yeah. is corporate, this is level three. And uh, I went out there and by God's grace, you know, he gave me the strength to do that. And luckily I was never hit. I was never stabbed. I never had the PC up. You know, I paroled from there. And uh, yeah, first day I got out, I went to church. Amen. First day I got out, I went to church. It wasn't to see the family so much. I knew I had to, I didn't want to be one of those people who fakes it in there. Yeah. And it's not real. And so I didn't even know if I was real until I got out. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I used to hear that same thing all the time. When I was fighting my case, they're like, ah, you're just serving. You're saying you're a Christian because you're scared to get a lot of time. And then when I got time, they're like, ah, you're serving him because you want to get down to a lower level. And then I finally worked down to a camp. They're like, uh, you're going to forget God once you go to halfway house and, and, and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? And now it's like I've been out 2010. Uh, it's been 11 years still serving God, you know, and um, but I, I get it, man, because a lot of people do play church. A lot of people do leave the Bible at the gate, you know, and that's a reality, unfortunately, you know, but 
So you gave your life to the Lord, and now you, we got this fight coming up, or maybe depending on when people watch this, maybe it's already passed. You know, somebody's going to watch this after next week. But um, is is your movie that you did with Kilroy is that a one shot wonder thing, or what? What's in your heart about film? No, I've already done. I've already done a lot of a lot of stuff with film. Besides, like doing stuff that's that's all over YouTube. You know. Yeah. You know, I got stuff on YouTube that I've already done and stuff like that. I've been involved okay. a lot of films, a lot of films because um, upon release later on, as I grew, I got I got a scholarship to USC. I got to go to Biola University for linguistics and TESOL, linguistics and TESOL, and I yeah. can't even talk. And uh, I've also gotten a film school, nice. I've also got a film school in L.A. So um, it was not just a one shot thing. So there is this I've been involved in a lot. I've created a lot of opportunities and God's put me in positions to help people get in the film industry through acting and this and that. Mostly those are in secular films. Yeah. Gilroy is not a, not a one shot thing for me, man. It's, Amen. Um, that's it's, good um, because that's good because not only do we need more Latino producers and directors, but Christian ones. Yes. So I'm really happy to hear you say that. And um, is, is, would you consider film a passion of yours? Oh yeah definitely creating um something but something worth that with eternal benefits like i've turned down a lot of films and 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 i'm nothing okay let me say this i'm nothing um i'm nothing holy i'm nothing like a spiritual person i love the lord you know i'm not like mr spiritual but let me say this um movies come to me all the time paul could you help in this movie Paul, can you help in this movie? Paul, can you help in this movie? I can't. I can't. I can't. And these are some big movies with big actors. I mean, actors you guys know, comedians yeah. you guys know. And uh, I can't because there's no eternal um, perspective in this movie. There's nothing that's going to lead people. And I was telling someone the other day at a marriage conference, they were asking me what films I'm working on. And I go, you know, I got to turn down films because I don't want to be involved with nothing that my daughter can't be proud of later on and look back. I go, I might have less money now. I could have jumped on those films and made more money. Oh, we'll give you so much percent of this film. We'll give you the percent of this film. But when my daughter looks back, I want to leave Jesus. I don't want to leave the flesh. The, oh, daddy was involved in this flesh ball movie that had sex scenes. and You know what I mean? I want to leave a testimony yeah. for her. Because now I'm teaching her to edit. Wow. You know? And that takes a lot that, that, that takes a lot of integrity, man, especially you being down in, in Southern California, the music industry capital, and to have that integrity, you know. Um, as you know, it's it's also a passion of mine to do films. Yep. So so that's another reason I think of, of me just being interested in being your friend because we have that that we can always talk about. Yeah. I was in I was in eight movies before Christ that were in Blockbuster Video, Hollywood Video. I've done one Christian film since then called Always With You. So that's another thing, you know, just um, that that we can talk about. It's film. And that's something I'm excited about, too. So that's why I like to know, you know, your thoughts toward film. And 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 um, I think that there's an open. An open gap there that nobody is taking, you know, in in in. in not only Christian film, but in Chicano, Latino, however you want to label it. And I'm not saying that we get put in a box there, but nevertheless, that gap is there and nobody is taking it, you know? And, and I'm just really excited to see what you're going to do, what you've done already, but also in the future, you know, as far yeah. as film, because film, man, film captures the hearts of people. We can't, we can't shy away from it. We can't be like, oh, that's for the devil or whatever. Man, everything can be used in the name of Christ. And, and we, the church has given up too much. And now it's time to take it back. That's that's how I feel. I agree, bro. You're right. Film does touch people's hearts, as does music. Mm -hmm. As does music. And you know who understood that very well, who made a lot of movies, was uh, Pastor Ed Morales. Oh, yeah. yeah. With this Duke of Earl, would you, what, like next time you watch it, you can see that this man, although he put secular music in the films, he understood that music moves people and he understood that music is going to keep them there watching the film, put this oldie there, put this oldie. And he understood that. Yeah. I know you're a music guy or you were a music guy. And I know you understand that the music moves people, yeah. you know, and he understood that. 
Did you ever get the chance to did you ever get a chance to eat meat at Morales? Yeah, I did one time in Victory Outreach Las Vegas. I was visiting, actually visiting some friends. And I met him one time, but this is probably about a year before he died. Yeah, yeah, that big old brush. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he um he was a blessing to me, and a lot of people don't know that when I got out, I guess somehow somebody told him that Sir Dino got saved and he just got out of prison. And so he wanted to meet with me, you know, because he had Trust me, he knew the influence. He was in, he's in San Jose, he was in San Jose. Oh yeah. And my music has such an influence that it was insane. And when he found that out, he, he wanted to meet me. And I didn't know this was the last year that he had um, to be here, you know, to be absent of his body, wow. to be present with the Lord. But I went down to meet him because um, I used to watch Duke of Earl as a, as a gang member. I, I went to see the Duke of Earl play here in Stockton, all choloed out and everything, wanted nothing to do with Jesus, but I wasn't going to turn down watching, um, you know, Duke of Earl play live, you know? And um, so I went down to meet him and, and I just shared my heart with him. And I, we talked about Duke of Earl, you know, and I told him that, that he was ahead of his time, you know, and I asked him, I asked him this, I said, are you ever going to film again? Cause I didn't know where I was going to be. Cause I, I told him I did eight movies before Christ and I don't know where God is leading me. You know, I was literally fresh out. I still probably smelled like federal prison. And because he goes, are you going to, are you going to do music? Are you going to, so are you going to continue film? I said, you know, what? I, I don't even want to share my testimony. I just want to serve God. I just want to preach. And he goes, no, 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 you can't do that. He goes, David, he goes, God gave you gifts of music and, and film and your testimony. And you have to, you have to use it for, for the kingdom. And I was completely against it, you know? And um, I remember telling him that. And, and I said, pastor, I said, are you planning to film more movies? And he goes, you know, I'm so busy with this church, but I have so many more movies in me. And that's so heartbreaking now, you know, after what happened months after this conversation I had with him. And he said this one thing to me and he says, David, he goes, whether you realize it or not, he goes, the, the baton that I have is about to be passed to you and you have no idea. And I didn't know how to receive that, you know, and even, and then he asked me to give my testimony at his church. I refused a lot of times. And finally, he was so persistent. It was hard to say no to that man. And I finally gave my testimony for the first time at his church. It was about a thousand people that showed up, about 200 people got saved. And he says, didn't I tell you, David? He goes, you need to talk about your testimony. You need to share it. And you need to, to allow God to operate in all the gifts that he has given you, whether in film or music or whatever. You know, yeah. and it was really inspiring. I love the fact that you have... Um, uh, uh, interviewed a lot of the cast that that I know I've not gotten I've been blessed to know them also and meet them personally. Uh, I know you're gonna you're gonna meet up with the uh, Indio. Yeah, Indio man, man Indio he, NorCal. We're yeah, he's in NorCal. Yeah, he's awesome, man. He's an awesome person and and a great friend. And I've had many many dinners, you know, with him and just talking and talking about the Lord and stuff. And I haven't seen him in a while, you know, but man, just, it's exciting to, you know, being that we're Christian, we're Chicanos, and to see what he did with Duke of Earl, I don't see why, you know, I think that was a seed that was planted that is going to grow in myself, in you, who knows how many other people, I mean, how, we were inspired by that. Yep, I think, I think, um, and I told this to Victor Barrera, and I think I told Cisco, who was Vince Molina, I think I told them both, is that, you see, me and Joe, I don't know if you know, but that movie in L.A. is huge. Like, everybody knows the Duke of Earl. Same and thing here. They know, and little do they know, up there, most of this cast was Norteños, you know, former yeah. Norteños, which is cool, man. But but um, I told Victor, and I think I told Cisco more specifically, that, you know, we used to watch, me and Joe used to watch that. And we're the fruit. A little bit so our salvation a little bit we owe to pastor ed yeah watch that movie over and over and over and got the gospel i agree i kind agree of and now victor um victor barrera which was the duke in the movie yeah he's making a short film and we might be able to help him with that that's what i heard oh, I, I saw that interview yeah and what happens is um 
he's trying to get his grandkids involved in helping with that. So he's trying to pour it on the next generation because, like I said, very few got the vision, man, that, man, with through media, you could reach the masses, man. Yeah. You know? I agree. Beautiful. I agree, man. So, um, I mean, how long have we been talking now? I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I, honestly, like, the reason I wanted to talk about your salvation and film is because if we talk about everything, it turns to a really long video or it ends up getting very fragmented. And I would rather just continue conversations with you in the future about other subjects. You know, a lot of times we want to give a testimony and we cram our whole story and it just sounds yeah. all over the place. And, yeah. you know, and, and I love the fact that we have to establish, I wanted to establish who, who, who's Paul, you know, who is Paul? And um, I think you did, you did that very well, you know, and just talking about film, you know, and I'm really excited, you know, to see what you you and Joe or yourself, or I don't know how your relationship is, you both of you, he's an amazing brother. Uh, I got to break bread with him uh, at Tony A show, you know, and um, there's nothing like breaking bread, you know, just having dinner with somebody that you get to know them, you know, and, um, but I'm just really glad, you know, I'm really glad about our friendship and the things in the future and, uh, and the things that, that you'll be doing and, and even myself, and may, maybe we'll collaborate, you know, on, on a project someday too. Yeah. And you know what? And, and that's my main thing, man, is, is right now, you know, we got the fight, you yeah. know, and that's been, you know, most of my time because I'm me and me and Rojo are the main ones organizing, we're organizing everything behind the scenes. Yeah. But after the fight, man, I'm really going to get on my knees and start praying what the Lord has next Yeah. Uh, regarding film, because I, I have ideas in my mind, but um, until I could really devote and sit down and do it, but I'm a doer. You know, I will, I will do it. And, and um, even if it's a short film, a little 10 minute film, something to throw on YouTube, you know, uh, my job is to preach the gospel and Amen. preaching the gospel through film is what I'll do. I mean, I got some documentary plan, but is it right now? I don't know. You know, yeah. I got a lot of little films in the works that people want me to help with, but ultimately, and I know you'll understand this, like you brought up, you know, what you and Joe or whatever. Ultimately, I got to pray like the road God has for me. Amen. You know what I mean? God has for me. And if God has this particular road in the film, I have to go in there alone. And if other people come, praise God. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and God will bring the right people. And just like you, you know, with the movies you're going to do, God's going to speak to you. Amen. Not everybody's going to have that same vision because you want to go with people who are going to run with you and get the yeah. passion and vision. And we're going to do, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It has to be, bro. And yeah. Mind if I ask you a question? Yeah. Because it puts you on the spot. Go and for I've it. I've been wondering. I've been wondering. Okay. I know you might not be able to answer this, but what does the Lord have next for you in film, man? What's, what's in your mind? What's stirring? Well, I did, after I did the Christian movie, Always With You, I had one major issue is that, see, back in the day when I released music, I had major distribution. So I knew whatever I recorded was going to get heard by the masses that wanted to hear Sir Dino or Dark Room. When I got out of prison and after two years, I started this film Always With You. I filmed it. To me, is my greatest film I've ever done. I learned so much, so many mistakes. You learn from each film. And um, now I watch that, I see mistakes. But nevertheless, I'm very proud of the movie. My problem was I had no distribution. So I filmed that in 2013, finished it in 2014, and it just hit a standstill. I would travel to churches and show it to, you know, 50 people, 100 people at a time, but it never had a, a, a platform to really release. So I stopped, not because I didn't have a passion for it, but I didn't want to make movies that had no distribution because you put all your heart and soul in something. And then recently, maybe about eight months ago, I learned how to get on Amazon Prime. And then it was funny because a month later, then I saw you, your movie on Amazon Prime. I'm like, okay, Lord, that's a sign because I, I, I figured out how to do it. And then when I saw you, your movie on there, it gave me more confidence. So now that I see that vehicle there, now that I learned a little bit more about their expectations, also Netflix expectations on the type of film they want as far as quality and whatnot, they want 4K or higher, things like that. Um, I have a lot of movies that I want to do. Um, my first one, actually, this next coming one is going to be Mist of My Confusion, which is 
per se not a faith-based movie. It was my first book I wrote back. I was uh, serving a year house of rest. And it was a story about a young man and the decisions he makes between family and gangs. And even though it's not a faith-based movie, it's a, it's, a, it's a decision so many young Latinos have to make. And, um, and, this, and by our decisions on what happens by the decisions we make. So that is um, a book that I had released back then. I re-released it now on Audible, ebook, and as paperback on every single platform. So my plans are to use that to, to make a bridge and to bridge people. And after that, it will be faith-based movies. But I'm gonna use that man as a magnet. And that's what my future is. Um, I do pastor a church uh, and that is my passion. My second passion is film. A lot of people don't know because I don't have a lot of material, but only because I've been held back by distribution. And I think that door is opening wide open. So I'm really excited about that, brother. Hopefully, That's awesome, bro. That's yeah. awesome. And I think um, right now, self-distribution yes. is, is really, um, is really um, where it's at. Exactly. Because if we're, make, if we're making movies about the streets, I mean, let's be honest, man. I mean, God, God's going to break through any door. Yeah. But I've, I've got to talk to the president of the Christian Sony, the, the, at Sony, yeah. you know, that does uh, Affirm Films. Mm -hmm. They don't want nothing to do with Chicano Films. Mm -hmm. Pure Flicks have want nothing to do with Chicano Films. Yeah. So I've knocked on those doors and I've talked. And whether it be Kilroy or something, I can understand Kilroy. Kilroy's a little mobstered out. But then to see when they do these other mobster movies or or they put out like, it's not Kilroy, too many stabbings. Like they had like three stabbings. Yeah. Then I watched some of their other films, like their films about the Roman empire. You see like 200 people getting slaughtered detail. Yeah. So it's like, so I think for us, man, um, we got to keep praying for an open door with someone. Yeah. Wise, but man, I think um, the doors are also opening through COVID a lot, self distribution. Yeah. And there's doors opening for us that people. Um, yeah, I agree. People are, they're, they weren't open before, but due to COVID, people are skipping over the movies and going straight to distributor. Mm -hmm. uh, we just got to knock on those doors and find them, and not by yeah. might nor by power, but by his spirit, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I did the same thing. I'm a doer too, man. And from the beginning, when I started Darkroom back in the days with a couple guys, we did not wait for the industry to open doors. We cracked those doors wide open for ourselves. And I brought that same mentality now, whether it's starting a church. I, didn't, I wasn't like, there were so many church planners. Oh, you got to raise up 50,000, 70,000 first before you even think about it. I'm like, you know what? Either God is in this or not. I'm going to walk okay. in and God's going to open these doors. And what happened? House of Rest is there. It's established. It's established church for 10 years. Same thing with books. We are we are our own publisher. We publish our own books. We get them on every single platform. We learn how to do that. And the same thing's going to happen with film, brother. And by you, you um, building your, your audience you know, and your subscribers and myself and some of the other people that we know, we are literally creating our own genre. We're creating our own audience. We're creating our own people that are going to love um, our stuff. And I learned that early on with Darkroom that um, I was never after the, the, um, the, the rap audience. I'm talking about Before Christ. I was never trying to sell to the person buying Hammer or Too Short or NWA. I was trying to create our own genre of people that just love Darkroom or love Sir Dino music. And when I did that, that's how I was able to. Because if you're trying to sell to people that are buying everyone else, then they will drop you in a second. But if you build up a fan base of people that love Sir Dino or Darkroom, they were going to constantly buy the material all the time. You know, and so we created our own kind of, so I would travel to any barrio across the Southwestern states and they knew exactly who we were. So I didn't have to be known by the executives in Hollywood. I didn't have to be known. And I think the same thing now as a Christian, if I was that bold back then, how much more bold now in Christ are we going to be when we make movies or film or art or whatever it is we do, when we are doing it in the name of Jesus to bring people to Christ, how much more? powerful is that going to be yeah you know? yeah amen bro amen and, and man i think i think the the industry just doesn't realize yeah. there's a whole underground of mexican yeah. chicanos all over the southwest who will yeah who who, who will buy product man yeah I, I and, give a chance but since they're not 
we'll, we'll do it, you know? We, we cr we're creating our own industry. And by the time they realize it, we won't need them anymore. Yeah. You know, honestly, <laughs> that's the way I see it. You know, yeah, it's funny that we're having this conversation about film on an interview instead of in person, because we've hung out we've talked on the phone, you know, but just sharing our hearts about film, you know? And I think we're both going in the same direction here. And yeah. I'm, I'm excited about it, man. Yeah, and you know what I would add too to the people watching is, um, you know, me and David, we ain't no one special. We ain't rich, you exactly. know. But God has opened the doors for the gospel in such a way right now that you could buy the cameras very inexpensive now. Yeah. You could, there's editing software that you could get, man, pay like 20, 25, 30 bucks a month, whether it be a, Adobe Premiere or whatever. You can make the movies now, man, yourself. Some of these good kids are whizzes, and you could reach the masses. And I hope maybe there's somebody out there that's been thinking about it. You could do it. Just do it. Just save up, buy the camera, do it. You what know? do you like to edit? What software do you like to edit on? Uh, I like Adobe Premiere. Adobe yeah. Premiere. That's, that's I, my favorite. I yeah. learned on, um, what's the other one? Oh, my, the Mac one? I forget. Not iMovie. Um, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Oh. I, 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 yeah, I edit my, the music videos I've done and movies I've done um, now, recently now, is a, um, Sony Vegas Pro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love that cool. software. Yeah, and the easiest one to me is um, a Final Cut. Final, Final Cut, Cut to me is so, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to use. But man, if you want to get deeper, I mean, you know, obviously yeah. there's a million out there like, Man, a final, I mean, Adobe Premiere is a lot used in the industry, but there's others. Yeah, I've used uh, Adobe Premiere too, but just Sony Vegas Pro, just, I don't know, it just works it. with me. Yeah. It yeah. works with me. And, um, but um, one more, two more things real quick before we wrap it up. I want to promote the fight because it's about to happen in a few days. And then second, you said you had a story for me. Oh, yeah. So but that one's off air. <laughs> okay, that's off air. Yeah. Okay, so then we got one more thing to talk about then is um, this fight, man. Let, you know, there might be somebody that is on the fence about getting the fight or on the fence about what it's about, or maybe they don't even know about it. So how would, how would you present it to them right now? Because we got a few days left. Yeah. So this fight is coming up June 26th. I know some people are going to watch this after. You can yeah. still go rent it, by the way, yeah. uh, even if it's after. June 6, 2021. Yeah, June 26, 2021, you could, uh, what it is, is uh, there's a, a guy named Gunner who's a YouTube uh, influencer up north, really, really well known in, in Northern California. He's going to be boxing a guy from East LA named Cholo Trucker, who's also an influencer down here on YouTube. They're going to box each other. And uh, the money that we're using is going to go up for charity. There's three different charities. There's one from up north that that uh, touches at-risk children. There's one down here that does uh, sexual assault victims. And there's also, we're trying to help this little girl get her extra money for college as she's going away to college this next year. She got accepted. She was from the hood. She was actually from my hood. She is from, she's going to Brown University, from the hood wow. to Brown University, which is Ivy League. So they gave her a full ride, but we're just trying to give her a little extra to show her love. Plus, uh, hopefully, it ministers to her through Christ. Yeah. So we're trying to um, do this fight, and hopefully, through this, with the undercards and everything going on, it promotes peace within California. These guys are former gang members; they're not active gang members, and uh, so they're going to be boxing. We we'll hope you guys will support it. It's thirty four ninety nine. The link it, it's going to be shown all over the world on Vimeo. So we're hoping you guys support it and. And help with these charities and, and enjoy a good night of boxing, June 26th, yeah. 6 p.m. So, you know, I want to add to that is this, man, is that some people, if anybody thinks like, oh, man, $34.99, seriously, if you have three or four people in your car and you go to Starbucks, you're going to spend that. Yep. You know, and at Starbucks, your money is not going back to your community. Your money's not going back. It's it's going to some corporate person that that, you know, is just on a pile of money. Here's, here's, this is what we're talking about, about creating industry, is if you support our own, your, your, the books and the people, the movies and all that, it helps create an industry so much that we don't need Hollywood. We don't need these people that, that are going to try to compromise our faith. 
You know, we need to stand behind. This is this is Paul, a praying man, a, a man that that loves the Lord, trying to bring this fight to show unity uh, within our own people. You know, and how can you not support that? That is cheaper than four drinks at Starbucks. Yeah. That is cheaper than the twenty piece meal at KFC. You know, so it's like, I think that um, it's an important thing. I think it's an exciting thing. I think it's fun. Um, I think these guys are, are are showing great sportsmanship. You know, they are they're friends. They're friendly, but when they when that ring goes, they're gonna um, show us a fight. You know, and it's gonna be a, a great thing, and it could be the beginning of something. And you could be on the groundwork of it of this industry that we are creating within our own selves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, any last shout outs? Anything? Yeah, I would like to do a shout out, man. Because, uh, you know, in the next few months, I'm going to be going up to NorCal uh, here and there, you know, to do some filming, some interviews, stuff like that. And the first stop we're going to do is um, definitely going to involve House Arrest. So I want to send a shout out to House Arrest, to Pastor Al, and all you guys I met at Familia Juarez, man. Just it was a blessing seeing you guys. Yeah. That's a miracle in itself. But I just want to say House Arrest, man. I can't wait to visit you guys and um, drag my other friends in the film crew to church. <laughs> hopefully they get ministered to and i uh, just want to send a shout out to you guys and a shout out to everybody who's just supporting the fight and also i would say just um listening to me my and david's heart man um pray for us because we know what god could do through, through media and reaching people so Amen. we need your prayers for god to give us wisdom what to do but not only us maybe god spoke to you and maybe it's time you pick up the camera or maybe you can't pick up the camera or you don't have the desire, but hey, God says, hey, maybe I'm going to, um, you know, I feel like helping these guys out in, 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 in not funding us, yeah, funding film. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You say, hey, I want to support Pastor David or I want to send some to pass to Paul, Pastor Paul, to Paul for. Um, oh, you're prophesying. No, no. <laughs> I'm older than dirt, but maybe you want to help financially to help us make a film yeah. you know that that could be a way too or, you know, or, or there's an old saying there's a old, yeah or both because there's a saying either um either either um go do it yourself it's either go send or disobey mm -hmm. you should be somewhere in the middle you should be either doing it go whatever your calling is yeah send if you can't go send you know help financially or whatever way you can or disobey you should be somewhere in there with those yeah. three so i just encourage you what is what is your thing and follow your calling whatever god tells you to do you know follow your calling man today's the last days let's not be those christians that um just sit in the garage and say we're a car but we don't get out there you know yeah you guys let some get to church let's read our word let's get involved in ministry in your church i sat around after being on the mission field for about four or five years when I moved back from Mexico, not sitting around, bro, because not that I was backslidden, I was just scared to get involved in ministry. Yeah. You know why? Because of my background as a gangster, because they're going to do a, a check or they, they might do a, a, a background check. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. And all my shootings are going to come up. And finally, I had to say, you know what? It is what it is. I got to trust the Lord. So I, if you're sitting there and maybe you go to house of rest or Calvary Chapel, Praise Chapel, you guys, today's the day. Get involved in your church. It's, it's, these are the last days, man. We need to get active and we need to be about our father's business. And yeah. if, you're not, if you're watching this and I'm saying this for all you people, and I know I'm preaching here, but this is a Christian channel. So I'm taking right. up David's time right now. You guys, I meet so many people who will watch church from home and some people are sick. They have to, you know? But so many people today are using it as an excuse. The, you know what? The Bible says don't forsake, don't for, don't forsake the gathering, don't forsake the assembly. Get to church, a good Bible teaching church. Get there and stop making excuses. Oh, you know, you don't need the church for you know to know Jesus. That's true. You don't need church to know Jesus. You can accept them. But if you really have God's Holy Spirit in you and you're obeying his word, you're gonna get to church and you're gonna be part because can the Toe say to the body, wait, we have no need of you. Yeah. You're part of the body. That's good. You're supposed to be plugged in. And you know, 
and be being filled with the spirit. Read the word, you know, God said in his word that he lifts his word above his name. Yeah. Be in his word, you know? So we got to walk the walk guys. It's, it's time, bro. It's time for us to walk the walk. Stop playing church. If you guys ever need me to get my email from David and I'll tell you the same thing to your face. <laughs> yeah. 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 Also, oh, sorry, David. I think another thing is, is we need, there's people you need to get into acting. What if you're not an actor? There's people that need to learn technical stuff, editing, uh, 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 filmography, holding the cameras, the lighting, the sound, all of that requires somebody that, that knows or has a passion for that uh, screenwriting, you know, script writing. You know what I mean? That that's a there's a software like the one I use is a uh, oh man, it just left my head. The one I use for uh, for writing screenplays, you know, is um, I can't think. Final Draft or is that something else? No, there's Final Draft. Final yeah, draft. yeah, I use Final Draft for writing movies. You know, Ooh, a lot of people don't know the that. real stuff. That's the pro stuff. Yeah, yeah. So guys, you know, just uh, do some do some for the Lord. You know. Um, so I guess that's it, brother. I'm going to stop recording. See you guys later. God bless. All right.